Chokers. What is up, Garage Couple fans? Today we have the three of us, Aline, Greg, myself. That didn't sound uh, let's, let's try that all so over. This is the family, Aline, so, Greg, and Jerry. So the three of us today, we have an awesome video planned for you. We are gonna be installing lighting upgrades on our Jeep Wrangler TJ Rubicon that you all have seen in our prior videos. This is the Jeep that we lifted like four plus inches. We put these massive Milestar 38s on there. And now we're gonna do a lighting upgrade. Now, a lot of people asked us what kind of lights are we gonna install? And we chose to go with these Oxbeam pods and also a hood light bar. We kind of stayed away from the big light bar on top of the windshield. Sometimes they make noise, they're difficult to wire. So we went ahead and we got these. We're gonna wire them to our high beams Last week we gave away a flagpole mount to the winner. We sent over paying with our own money, $100 worth of the flagpole mount. So if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out and hang tight for our future giveaways. We have more and more coming. We just have to develop them and figure them out. Other things in our prior video, when we did the synthetic winch install, we'll put the link right there. I put the synthetic line in the wrong way and some many people pointed it out and thankfully for you, I'm going to fix that today in this video as well. So without further ado, I just want to show you the parts in this video. Let's get started. What do you think of the net, dude? It's pretty legit, huh? Peekaboo! Peekaboo! So why don't we open up some of these boxes? Alright, let's do it. While Jerry hangs tight on that metal cloak fender. These are the Oxbeam 7 inch spot and floodlight combos. Wow! These things are heavy. Like, whoa! Why don't we show them what we have on our TJ over there? All right. But I just want to show you a comparison of how different these things are. Hopefully, Jerry doesn't go crazy that we're walking away. <laughs> I mean, just look at this difference. These are the ox beams. They probably weigh like 10 pounds. These are the Amazons that we've had. They worked fine, but I'm curious to see the difference. I mean, just look at that. Night and day difference. I wonder the, di the difference in the quality. These are gonna go on our A pillars. So it's gonna look just like this. Let's go. Before we get started, just wanna let you know, everything you see in this video is gonna be in the description. That includes a multimeter. Hey, dude. Hey, 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 what's going on, dude? He loves the Jeep. He lo this is the first time seeing the upgrades. Yeah, he's a fan. Everything's gonna be in the description. This includes the multimeter and all the tools, all the electrical connectors, everything that we need to get the job done. Because we are not adding a switch to this, we are connecting it directly to our high beam so that we don't have to do any extra wiring. I figured, hey, like we're gonna need the high beam too if we're trying to get the maximum amount of light. So we might as well wire it all together. So we have two of these seven inch pods for the A pillar. And next up, we also have this aux beam. This thing is also pretty heavy duty. Oh. There goes the hardware, everyone. <laughs> this is another light bar. And Sick. this is like the Osram style. I don't know if you can see it. It's like the fisheye style. And so I'm expecting this thing to be extremely bright. And I'm excited to wire all three of these things to each other. I'm going to show you how to do that safely and how to do it in the garage. Let's get started. Dun, dun, dun. So it looks like this kit actually comes with some wiring. Maybe I can use these pieces of wiring instead of fabricating my own. But worst case scenario, I already prepared some which you can see over here on the table. I can, you can go either way, uh, wh whichever one's more convenient, whichever one's fastest. Hopefully this is under a two hour job. Also, I'm gonna be using winch mounts for the hood light bar. I couldn't come up with a good way to do this. So what I have here are these like tabs that I kind of searched around and found. So this will allow us to mount it and make it all work. So you're gonna need a T40 to remove all those pesky bolts on the hood, A-pillar, all that. So just invest in a nice T40. If anyone wants these Oxbeam stickers, just comment below, send us your address, and we'll send it on the way. The first thing I'm gonna do is spray all of those bolts with liquid wrench, just so that they start marinating. And now I'm gonna try to remove them, God willing, one by one. Why don't we do that now? All right, liquid wrench. This is our cleaning area. That's... It's over here. Well, then I... 
already uh, used it. Is, oh, ouch. Already over there. All right, Jerry. So I just want to mock up all of the brackets first. So I'm going to just do that first. Going to put all the brackets on, and then we're going to worry about the wiring, and then also the synthetic line. I'm going to fix that. Hey, so. maybe, maybe Jerry, it's time for Jerry to go back inside. <laughs> Jerry, what do you think of those hires, dude? Hey. Hey, baby Jerry, what's up, dude? Can I have a kiss? Thank you, dude. Good, baby Jerry. Good. Hey, what's up over here, huh? Little cutie. All right. Why don't we take you inside and let let's get the ball on the on the driveway, right? Get the ball on the driveway. Ball on the driveway. Show on the road. Alrighty, that okay, doesn't make chance. sense again. Let's Here we go. Light bars before lift, kids. What? What? Kids? Light bars before lift. I, what are you thinking about, Greg? We just got married. Alrighty. No one is gonna know the <laughs> Light bars before lift kits, hashtag. Hashtag light bars before lift kits. What are you saying, Greg? So I took those two screws out. They didn't give me a fuss. They have some blue Loctite on them as well as some paint. That's why it might give you a little bit of a bite at first. It, this system comes with these foam applicators so that you don't stra scratch the body of the vehicle. I'm gonna try to reuse the original screws that came with it. So let's just line it up. Didn't end up using this thing. It was just becoming too thick with it. Didn't wanna deal with it. On to the other side. So just as a heads up, if you're gonna get the same aux beam lights as us, if you're gonna use the same brackets that we used, the bolt that holds the aux beam light into place it doesn't actually fit. So I used a simple file, as you can see here, and now it fits. So just file down both sides. I'm using something like this, and it is getting the job done for me. So easy, easy fix. So the original painted bolt that came out was tapered, and it wasn't reaching because of the added distance of this thing. So I just went ahead and sourced another bolt. I had this bolt laying around, so I didn't have to go buy it, thank thankfully. And now I'm just screwing this in, and we're in business. One last check, and we are on to the next set. So same process, take them out. Every time I hear that noise, I panic a little bit. Imagine how I feel. Strip bolts have been one of the enemies in the garage since we started. One of the many enemies next to bad and poorly manufactured products. <laughs> Hinting at something? Check the link above uh, kind of a thing. Where I put it? I don't know. Did I speak too soon? <laughs> Oh boy. There is a 50-50 chance this is stripped here. I'm on the good 50 side. And if it's not 50-50, it's about to be 90-10 because I'm about to use a breaker bar and if it strips, it, it's going to strip now. I saw movement. No, oh, you saw strippage. That, my friend, is stripped. Alright, what happened now? Screw is stripped. Now, jeeping isn't hard. Don't get me wrong, modding jeeps can be challenging, but most of the time, it's pretty straightforward. What just happened was the bolt stripped out. I can no longer take it out. And now it's time to get creative. So by watching videos like this and by just doing this over and over, you start to get the hang of this kind of thing. Now what I'm gonna try is using a Dremel, I'm gonna put a lip in, in the nut itself, and then using a flathead and a hammer, I'm gonna chisel the screw out. Hopefully this works and doesn't leave us dead in our tracks. Dead in our tracks? Google it. Alright, someone's a little upset about the situation right now. She's getting a little sassy. Pretty sure you jinxed us by saying strip screws are the worst, one down, one to go, that kind of thing. Now we have our a strip screws. So. Alright, so it's my fault. It is your fault. 100%. This is a great feeling, guys, but I hope you don't have to go through the same issue. Kind of nervous because we still have six more bolts to deal with. But what I had to do was Dremel a line through the whole bolt, grab my trusty mallet and, and flathead and just go for it. And I finally broke it free. As you can see, it is not an easy process. And 
See that? That is the look of success. Now, just as a quick heads up, I damaged the heck out of this area. Good thing it's going to be blocked by the light, but I'm probably going to put touch-up paint on that. So it's, it should be okay. Trash. This wow. is trash. That, that's trash? Don't ever, ever make things with T. Torx heads. Just finished mocking this side up and oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Just look at that. That is humongous. I'm going to go ahead and install the other side now. Continue having some beers basically as the day got later and I had to remove that bolt. And then I will get you guys some night shots at the end of this video. But for now, we still have quite a ways to go. Hood bar plus we have the other ones. So let's do it. Got myself some tools. Aline right now is teaching, so she's not here. You cannot pick yourself. I want you to think about another person you heard about today and drop a comment in the chat box telling me the person you learned about and one fact that you learned. We are getting closer, guys. I'm super excited to see how this looks. And don't forget, I still have to replace and repair the winch line. So let's get these parts ready. Make sure you drop in this big nut into this beforehand and then next you're gonna thread it onto the light just like so certainly certainly much easier than removing that bolt boom let's just drop the nut on the other side and I guess it's a little easier with access once it's off the vehicle this is a 13 mil I believe and adjustable wrench on the other side I'm gonna start getting this ready here using the hardware that comes in the kit. They have very generously included some um, Allen wrenches. So I'm gonna just go ahead and put these end pieces on now. And now we're gonna go ahead and remove those six screws on the hood and install this high lift jack mount. We're gonna go ahead and install the high lift jack mount at this time. And then we're gonna go ahead and retrofit this to fit onto these high lift jack mounts. So let's do that now. Now that we've installed the brackets, we're gonna go ahead and mock up the light bar to see if how much of a spacer we're actually going to need. So this is far from fitting. Not a whole lot. Next up, I'm gonna use these braces to make it fit. I bought these on Amazon, I'll drop the link below. Unfortunately, it looks like the holes are a little bit too small. For our holes, uh, for our screws, they barely miss. So just a quick and dirty tip, grab some needle nose pliers like so, figure out which holes you're planning on using and just rotate just like this, just like that and it will absolutely open up your hole. So I'll do that now to all four holes and I will go from there. Now if you're new to our channel, just trying to show you like ideas on how to get things done. You don't have to be a professional. I mean, clearly I have these needle nose pliers in my hand and I'm doing this. So clearly I'm not a professional by any means, but I'm still able to get the job done.
All three of the light bars are on and ready to roll. Now all we have to deal with is wiring. I'm gonna show you exactly how to tap into the high beam of the headlights just so that we can go ahead and get the light bars working exactly with the headlights. Originally I was gonna make my own wiring harness but now I believe I'm gonna just use the one that comes with the kit. This is the stock wiring harness that comes with the kit. So it has the negative ground, this goes to battery, has this fuse positive, goes to battery. Next up it has the switch, which if you're going to use the switch, this is how you would do it. We're not going to be using the switch, so I will be cutting the black and the blue wire, just to have the white trigger wire. Next up is this wire right here, this goes to your accessories, going to modify this a bit. And last, and I believe that is it, just those four inputs. And we're going to go from there. So first thing I'm going to do is cut off the black wire here and the blue wire there. Now we can go ahead and pull those from the other end. I've just been working on connecting all the plugs now. I am using these shrink type plugs. This is my first time using them and so far I am pretty satisfied. Have not made much progress. I am just starting to connect the lights to the relay. And next, I'm gonna connect to the negative terminal, then positive terminal, and then I'm gonna show you using a multimeter how to grab it from the headlight. The reason I even tried using this, this style connector is a viewer recommended them. Now that you have it all connected, you're gonna just go ahead and tuck it underneath the cowl. The cowl is he held in with about six screws. You can see most of them on the outside, but there are two, one on each side over here. And from, you have to open the hood to get to them. They are held in with Phillips. So let's tuck this in. First, I'll put some electrical tape around it actually. I've read that you wanna avoid manipulating these when they are warm because the solder is still really warm. So I will just barely snake it in. So Alin just came back from tutoring. So now we can actually get good footage again. Hi guys, sorry about that. <laughs> See, that was Alin's doing. So, time to open up this, this rat's nest of wiring. Oh boy. I'll just cut it for now. Uh -huh. You know. All right. So we're gonna just quickly test for which one the high beam wire is. We're gonna do that using, we're gonna just unplug it and use a multimeter. So I'm gonna ask Aline in a moment to go ahead and... Grab your multimeter, I'm walking. Nope, nope, wrong. So the way I did this, I grabbed, I unplugged the headlight wire right over here. This one, right over there. And what I did was I back probed a multimeter and I had Aline turn on the high beam. Turns out this one, this hole, is for the high beam. So what I'm gonna do is just tap from this side into this wire and then when I use the high beam, it's gonna power the whole system. Let's tap into it now. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. Tap, 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 tap. On this end, I cut off the clip. I put on one of these gentlemen. Now we just gotta plug this in. This part is nerve wracking because they rarely plug in perfectly. Is that going? Yeah. Is that there, it clicked. I heard a clip. Everything's in? Yeah. And now we replug in our headlights. So which light was that for? Can you remind me? That was the high beam. Plugging yeah, but... into all three bars. Oh. Okay. And that's it? That that should be it. Why don't we why don't we give it a try? I really hope if I just open these. Oh. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, that is exciting. Oh my goodness, that made up for this whole install. This isn't a bad job, guys. I mean, just don't strip your A-pillar bolt and you'll have a great time. So know that these, uh, these little T-taps over here tend to go bad over time. When they wiggle, they might disconnect. So just drop a piece of electrical tape and if the system stops working, this is your first place to look, FYI. There are better solutions to this, but this is the fastest. I mean, you saw it, it took just a couple minutes and we're in business. So I'm gonna just zip tie this junk all back together and we can just tuck some wires away and then we're in business. We'll get you some amazing nighttime footage of the whole setup. 
pretty solid. I left to this thing kind of a mess and I'm back with just a couple minutes to spare and it is looking fabulous. Ew, just like ew, my hair ew. after teaching all day. Making a mess as usual. <laughs> oh. It's like one of our... Starting to look like a garage couple Jeep. Just wow. rat's nest wire everywhere. That sucks. It wouldn't be our channel if it didn't look like this. DIY guys, DIY. DIY for life. Do it yourself. That's not what it stands for. Does it? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I'm just joking you guys. For whatever reason, each Jeep has its own little knickknack, tatty whack, you know, all that stuff. So, we could not get the wire tucked in underneath the cowl. So, we ended up just bolting it up and we're just gonna have to tuck it in on the corner over here with the crease. We're just gonna have to also use our electrical wiring, make sure that it is safe and ready to go. Same issue on both sides, so we're almost done. All right. Let me give you a quick high beam. Do it. I'm gonna shut my eyes. Oh God. Wow. Crazy. Jeez. So here's headlights. I'll turn headlights off. Here are all the bars. That is amazing. It almost looks like I have a huge light bar, but without the road noise and without any of the fuss that the light bar brings. This is again, no headlights currently. Let me just make this U-turn. This is no headlights and all the, that is all the light bars running. Notice you don't really see reflection off the hood. I think that looks pretty amazing. Amazing. What's going on? I'm just kidding, bub, you did a lot. So this is the final outcome for the night. We said we were done, but we we're not. I lowered this light bar using other brackets that I had, and I think it looks amazing. Could it wasn't able to tuck this wire in. Probably we'll figure that out down the line. Let me just turn this light off. We are in the darkness of our garage. These are the halo lights, just the halos. These are the headlights. These are when I hit the high beam. These are the high beams. Look at this. What do you think, Ollie? Pretty good. I can make it disappear. Mm. Part of the fun of jeeping is that this is a, all a learning process. So I wound this in the wrong way, according to one of our viewers. Many viewers actually brought it to my attention. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna disengage the gear. I'm gonna take it all out and wind it in the right way and show you exactly how to do that. So should if you guys ever have any suggestions or if you see me doing something wrong or anything at all please please let me know in the video and I will happily accept my mistake and I'll happily make the correction so others don't follow after the mistake I genuinely didn't know and as you can see I'm not a professional by any means I have my own professional career my wife has her own professional career and we do this for fun so thank you so much for that advice and now well there you have it folks we got our a pillar light spotlights installed as well as the light bar in the middle of the hood I think it looks absolutely fantastic and I, I cannot wait to use this on our dark streets we also are. We also went ahead and switched out our synthetic line. We re-spooled it the proper way based on your recommendations. Thank you so much for doing that. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please feel free to check out our Instagram at Garage Couple and stay tuned for our next giveaway. We are excited to be growing and we are going to be doing lots and lots of bigger and better giveaways each time. 
Thank you for watching. Reach out to us with any questions and happy jeeping. See you.